The BMW M5, produced from 2004 to 2010, is already beginning to enter collector status with many accepting it as a modern classic and future historic vehicle. This is for a mix of reasons. The V10 engine and what is considered a high point in mechanical engineering, mixed with enough computing power to aid a driver, but not restrict a driver or fill the cabin with dancing lights and fake engine noises. Some markets will only ever know this generation M5 as the E60 sedan shape, which was produced in 2004 as a 2005 model year, but in 2007 some European nations will be offered the M5 as an E61 Touring. Only 1,025 Touring models were ever produced from a global run of just under 20,000 M5 sold in this era. For buyers in the USA, no Touring was offered, however, as BMW took with one hand they gave with another, and so unlike European buyers that were limited to a 7-speed SMG automated manual gearbox, the option of a proper 6-speed manual was made available for the USA. Today, swapping SMG models for manuals has started to gain some traction, with at least one E61 Touring M5 already having had the conversion, which can be found on YouTube driven by well-respected motoring journalists. For buyers today, there are several considerations, and we'll run through the common issues and recalls to be aware of before moving on to the engine. However, first off we'll note that if you want an overview of the 5 series this M5 is based on, we've already done a buyer's guide to check out after. The M5 gets several unique body panels including unique bumpers, front wheel arches are 4mm wider than the standard 5 series, although the rear remains equal and this is to accommodate a wider track. First up for recalls is a February 2005 when some models were found to have faulty seat occupancy sensors which compromise safety in the event of an accident, airbags and seatbelt pretensioners may not activate, risking serious injury or worse. Next was a recall in 2006 affecting a short production batch from the 9th of January 2006 to the 26th of April 2006. It was discovered that lower rubber mounts attached to the rear shock absorbers could fail or move out of place resulting in a compromise of handling characteristics. In March 2012 the M5 had an identical recall to the 5 series on which it was based for an assembly error that could affect the battery cover not being properly attached, causing the battery to overheat. This recall was announced for vehicles across the production run. Moving on to common faults, and there was one issue shared with the 5 Series model, is a fault of the steering sensor with technical service bulletin SIB340506 due to the failure of the optical sensor, the resolution being the replacement of the sensor. Rear differentials could make a grinding noise and a technical service bulletin addressed this coded SIB330102. The noise should be listened out for while manoeuvring slowly around a corner. On a test drive see if you can turn the vehicle a full 360 degrees with lock to lock manoeuvres as this should make the noise occur if it affects the vehicle you are viewing. The noise was generally caused by vehicles not having had the correct running in when new or having had the differential oil change with non-recommended oil. Although it will be more expensive to buy differential oil from a BMW dealer, it does guarantee the correct oil. SMG transmissions could suffer from a failure of the electric motor. Again, this has had a technical service bulletin coded SI B230107. The affected batch was built from January 2005 to January 2006. The brushes within the motor wear prematurely, causing failure of the motor. Any fault codes relating to hydraulic pressure such as codes 4F42, 4F43 and 4F40 could be pointing you in this direction. The resolution is the replacement of the electric motor for a newer item. Sticking with the transmission, a common complaint from owners has been the failure of the hydraulic pump. This is generally considered to be a when and not if occurrence and carries a large repair bill. If you've had any thoughts of looking into manual conversions, this would generally be the opportune time, as although manual swaps are still considerably more expensive, you'll be doing high value work either way, and something about a V10 manual will never quite lose its luster to many. If you find an SMG model that has already had the hydraulic pump replaced by a reputable specialist, take it as a positive buying sign. One more mention of the gearbox, but this time it's the clutch on SMG models. Wear rate is typically higher than direct competitors, and depending on your driving style or the previous owners, it may become an unexpected bill. Especially as the M5 will try and negate the wear characteristics as best as possible until the clutch is at failure, meaning owners can be caught out with it working one day to completely failed and needing replacement the next. The best advice is to service with a specialist and ask their advice if you have no record of previous replacement. Service history isn't a common fault with these cars, but sadly the depreciation curve of V10 M5s means that there are now some on the market that have not been maintained to the level necessary. 
This deferred maintenance carries with it even higher maintenance bills, so in looking for an M5, take time to seek out one that really has had a great record of service history or a bumper to bumper check over by a specialist with any major jobs resolved. We have seen a few M5s and the best was actually one that had a poor service record until the current owner got hold of it, but the caveat here is that he had spent more than the purchase price of the vehicle on the car again to get it into perfect condition with a specialist in performance vehicles with an intent to never sell it. It genuinely drove like the brand new examples I had got a chance to drive over a decade ago, but spending tens of thousands on an already expensive car is unlikely to be the plan of most M5 buyers. When looking for a used example, if you see one that has had a recent service, including spark plugs, then move it towards the top of your shortlist. A full service history alone can be very expensive on the V10 engine. If it has had recent tyres, this is another positive sign. Similar to the 5 Series, the intelligent battery sensor can play up. If this results in a weak battery, it is best to change it as a low voltage will open the door to several modules thinking there are other failures on the car and becoming a headache. Early cars can suffer eye drive or head up display failures. To check these work as expected when viewing a vehicle, body panels should be inspected closely as they can be expensive to repair and very expensive to replace. Look out for signs that an owner has had a cover up repair done to sell on a vehicle. Many of our other common issues are shared with the 5 series but generally M5 models do less mileage so general wear and issues should be fewer to the overall E60 and E61 M5 chassis. Before we move on to the engine though a final note is suspension. If possible take a bright inspection light similar to the one that we link in all our videos and check the shock absorbers for any weeping. If there is no history of bearings, ball joints and bushes being replaced then budget for these to be replaced when negotiating a deal in a plan for the worst but hope for the best mindset. Now moving on to the V10 engine, one thing to note with the M5 is that just by having a V10 you're entering a tiny group of car owners. Starting back in the early 90s with the production version of the Dodge Viper, V10 engines that are not limited to single digit creations are still very rare and the early 2000s is starting to become viewed as a golden era. Dodge would be joined by Lamborghini, Porsche and Lexus to offer the world spine tingling exotic cars with a V10. Ford and Dodge brought out V10 pickup trucks and even a van in the E-Series from Ford. And then there are the Germans. Audi and BMW launched V10 executive cars with the M5 ahead of the S6 and twin turbo RS6. The point here that is before we go into the potentially high cost pitfalls of a V10, they need to be viewed as something that is incredibly rare. The naturally aspirated S85 5 litre V10 produces 500 brake horsepower with officially recorded MPG of 19.6 or 14.41 litres per 100 kilometres. Rod bearings are well documented and for 2007 to 2008 models with 088 slash 089 bearings, several have been found to be out of recommended clearance causing a lack of lubrication. Although all years can suffer this issue, we noted this finding. If needing replacements, bearings 702 slash 703 were introduced and have more clearance. Rod bearing discussions between both M5 and V8 M3 owners is plentiful and so we'll note here that if you find one that has had shortened oil intervals and the rod bearings either checked or replaced, then take it as a positive buying sign. Throttle body actuators can fail and have been reported at as low as 30,000 mile intervals, although we should stress this does not mean that all will fail at such a low interval. Failure is generally caused by plastic gears within the actuators and aftermarket companies have looked into replacement these plastic parts with other materials. Speak to a local specialist in your area to see if they know of a supplier and the cost of replacement. Vanos pump failure is a concern as these vehicles age or reach higher mileage. Speak to an owner and ask if they've ever suffered any poor running. Unfortunately the Vanos pump can fail without warning and so again if you find one of these that has already been replaced take it as a positive buying sign. If possible, then check the oil coolers to see if there are any telltale signs of previous leaks. And when viewing an M5, take a good look around the valve covers for any signs of oil leaks. The gaskets are starting to age, particularly on early cars, and if there is no history of replacement, then a good look around should help avoid a repair, or at least factor the cost into any deal. Some owners report using oil at varying rates. Burning oil in the motor is not unheard of, but don't let this fool you into ignoring oil leaks. If you purchase an M5 and believe it's using oil, either do a full inspection yourself or take it to a dedicated specialist. At this point we'd like to add that although all these issues and more have been reported on the M5, what is not heard from is the number of owners that ran these cars without issue. 
After doing some digging, we did find a small but vocal number of previous owners that reported loving owning their M5. Although it did require a higher maintenance budget, it generally fell in line with other high performance vehicles that they had owned. So as ever, go in with your eyes open, but don't be afraid if you truly want a V10, you'll have an experience that just a fraction of people will ever get. For our picks, we'd look for a 2007 model year onwards, a manual gearbox would tempt us if we're in the USA, or the rare E61 Touring if in Europe would be our high budget pick. All will give you the V10 thrill though, and that is what this generation is all about. As ever, all the best with your car search, and if you're thinking of the M5's V10 rival, we already have a buyer's guide on the C6 generation V10 Audi RS6 to check out next.